Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about police behaving badly. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. The Woodstock Police Services got themselves in a little bit of hot water. After two separate arrests, officers from the police services were alleged to have committed battery in using excessive force in uh, arresting individuals. Both individuals, who were the victims of the police abuse of authority, didn't file their claims until after their criminal charges had been dismissed meaning that the time period of limitation for starting those claims had run out. The Woodstock Police Services applied to have the claims struck on the basis that they were statute barred. And the Court of Appeal ultimately determined, after a successful appeal of the decision striking the claim, that the clock doesn't start ticking until the criminal proceeding that underscored the action is complete. This is a very interesting decision, and something the Supreme Court of Canada shouldn't, shouldn't have declined hearing on the basis of the fact that it opens up the door for significant litigation against police departments after an evidentiary foundation for that litigation may have been laid in court. Rather than confirming the ordinary rule that litigation starts from the time of the action, the court opened the door for applications for relief to be filed long after the assaults have allegedly occurred. By that time, people have moved on, memories have faded, the evidence doesn't get better as time goes on. And while I certainly agree with the idea of allowing people additional time to file their claims when they've been abused by police because of the impact that a, a claim in civil court can have on credibility and, and reliability and issues that come up in a criminal trial, and because of the way that those two can interplay with one another, I think the Supreme Court of Canada should have visited this issue so that they could have made very clear guidelines applicable across the country for circumstances where this arises. Now we have competing rules across the country about when these claims start, and it's going to take a case coming to the Supreme Court of Canada to clarify when somebody can sue the police for the force that they used in arresting them. This case isn't it, but another case hopefully will be. You're watching Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thanks for tuning in to Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kylo Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Brazen Bull Creative has provided invaluable assistance in putting together these videos. And tune in next week, like, subscribe, and share with your friends.